it's lunchtime. Doesn't matter what time it is. She says it's lunchtime, so it's lunchtime. Our setting is an art museum. It's night, the guard is patrolling, and the custodian is dusting the paintings. That one has an unusually heavy layer of dust. He'll send it out to be sandblasted. And in the meantime, he'll put that one in its place. His theft goes off without a hitch, and he delivers the prize to his employer. All controlled, Mr. Ambassador. Temperature, humidity, amount of oxygen in the air. The perfect environment for a painting. For a painting, yes. Dandy for a man. No. <laughs> I like this episode because our bad guy is one of my favorite actors, Ross Martin. He was born in 1920 in what used to be Poland and is now part of Ukraine, but his family relocated to New York not long after. He studied business and law, among other things, and by the time he decided to be an actor, he spoke seven languages. Seriously, the more I learn about this guy, the more I realize he was a genuine, certified genius. Most people are like me and know him best as Artemis Gordon on the Wild Wild West. No offense to Kevin Klein, but he was not right for that role. Artie was never the timid, excessively talking, absent-minded professor that Klein portrayed him as. He was every inch just as much Mr. Cool as James West was and almost never got rattled. Martin first got noticed when Blake Edwards cast him as Baron von Stupa in The Great Race. He was ideal for parts like that because you need an accent, he can give it to you. Any accent, he did them all. That was one of the things that made him a master of disguise on Wild Wild West, his ability to do voices and accents. He had a massive heart attack during the final season of the show, and rather than replace him for another season, producers fumbled along as best they could and then ended the show. He recovered, and depending on when this episode was actually filmed, he did this right before or right after the heart attack. For reasons I can't explain, this entry isn't in his IMDb credits, and I haven't been able to find the date of his heart attack. He continued acting until he died suddenly of another heart attack in 1981. He was all of 61. He liked playing bad guys, so he's in his element with this role. Breathtaking, aren't they? Yes, sir. Yeah, and he's the only one who gets to see them. He has his flunky there swap out priceless art for fakes and bring the originals to Senor Selfish here. My little collection of American treasures is now complete. You've done a superlative job, Dandy. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. In just a matter of weeks now, we can exchange these for American dollars. I think the United States is going to prove a very generous host country, don't you, Dandy? Doctor and Dr. Weston are in a private plane headed to Washington, D.C. Carlson will give us the exposition. A few weeks ago, a routine examination of the National Treasury paintings that hang in the Capitol building was made. X-rays disclosed that five of the most important pieces were forgeries. Forgeries in the Capitol? It's an extremely embarrassing and potentially dangerous situation. I'm not sure how it's dangerous, but he says it's dangerous to Congress and the President, so maybe they all put up their kidneys as collateral for the paintings. In any case, American investigators have been following a trail. It leads to the Iberian Embassy and Diego de Vega, the ambassador. Why don't they just arrest him? Because they need proof, not suspicion. Also, the ambassador happens to be the youngest brother of Iberia's eccentric old dictator, who only winks at such playful extortions. Oh, that brother of mine, always with the shenanigans. Is he not, how do you Americans say, a hoot? The paintings are probably inside the Iberian embassy, and since it's officially foreign soil... Another means has to be tried. 
The clay resource. Me. Us. Right. I was waiting for the comedy sketch to start there for a second. But an embassy isn't an easy place to get into even when you're invisible. There are things like gates and fences and sharp wire and sometimes dogs with sharp teeth and stuff like that. I'm Wood, the secretary security chief. One of you is Larson. Carlson. I'm Walter Carlson. This will require a little bit of translation, which I have placed at the bottom of the screen. Let me tell you one thing, Charles. I'm not used to people overstepping my authority. There is one, only one stipulation in all of the contracts regarding the use of the resource. That stipulation is that I head the team. Now, the secret of the resource must remain intact in order for it to operate properly. Now, if we're going to work together, you'd better understand that. I hope that helped. <clears throat> Can we get going? Yes. Your reservations are at the Mayfair. I'll brief you on the way. As they were climbing in the car, Daniel whispered, Those of us who have it don't have to go around telling other guys about it. Kate whispered back, Don't I know it? Wood whipped around and asked what they were whispering about, but all Daniel would say was, It's all right, officer. We're married. In there are photographs of the paintings of Ambassador de Vega and an ex-con who goes by the name of Tandy. He works for de Vega, very sharp. We think he was the author. Also, keep your eye open for a man named Vittorio Gregario. We think he's using De Vega Embassy parties for a cover and a shelter for a hot art ring. Ah, the man with the American dollars. And from the sound of it, they do this from embassies all over the world. Time to put a stop to it. Art of any kind belongs to the world. That goes for paintings, sculptures, music, poetry, literature. None of it is meant to be hoarded. Frankly, unless they open their collection to the public, the notion of a private collector goes against the very idea of what art is all about. You want to be able to say you own the Gathering Dust by famous Renaissance artist Prosciutto? Buy it if you have the money. Then put it in a museum with a nice plaque that says it's on permanent loan by you. That way you get to own the painting and feed your ego, which is the main goal of most private collections. Dan, I've got the equipment. Dan, where are you? I'm right here. Don't do that. You'll be the death of me. Got you put on your head. Somebody said that to nearly headless Nick once. What followed wasn't pretty. Woods got an invitation for a party tonight at the embassy. She's to go as Kate Brandon, photojournalist for News Time. Now, the Vega thinks that she's doing an article on it. Sorry, Daniel, you're not invited. Only people with heads allowed. Once he's inside, Carlson has a gadget for him. Clay's newest. I'm really proud of this. Smallest, lightest camera in the world. I bet you still have to focus it. No. Nope. Just aim and shoot. Amazing what technology can do. Yeah, amazing what it can't do. Sorry, Dan. You should be. He's like this because you sold out to the Pentagon after you promised him you wouldn't. You have a lot of sorrying to do, my friend. Daniel briefs Kate on her cover story and has her examine the equipment Carlson brought. And there's one other thing. Try to make yourself attractive to him. Try to? You think I have to try to be attractive? Really, Daniel? Play up to him? Yes. Dan, how hard do you want me to play up to him? Walter wants you to play up to him so that you can uh, get some influence over him. If he's as big a stereotype as he appears to be, he'll also be a womanizer. She's a lovely woman, so he'll definitely try to nize her. Aides told me I was to be interviewed by a woman journalist, but I had no idea. I was expecting a woman, not a woman woman. In fact, you may be a woman woman woman. That took no effort at all. She wants to follow him around, listen to his conversations, take pictures, and without saying it, basically be his date for the evening. We can't see Daniel, of course, but we see evidence that he's standing by a plant trying to keep from screaming and punching this guy. Time to go to work instead. Shh. 
Surely that doesn't apply to me. So far, he's not seeing anything obvious. Then Tandy comes in. He's brought dinner for that guard and will take his place while the guard eats. At least he has company, he just doesn't know it. Daniel studies the environmental controls and all the rest and then exits. Is he ignoring you, gorgeous? Daddy, where are you? Tell you later. Just figure a way to get my camera into De Vega's right pocket soon. Can't you do it? Too many people. <laughs> the ambassador is shocked. Her camera case got a little wet, so would he hold a few things in his pocket while she takes care of the rest? How nice of him. He doesn't even look at what she's shoving in his pocket. He's too busy looking at her diplomatic pouch. Sometimes it almost seems too easy. The ambassador appears, opens the door to check inside, presto changeo, Daniel is in. Step two, recover his camera from the ambassador's pocket. Tendi, I beg you, please, keep a good distance away from the sensor plate. All Tandy can come up with is, I thought I did. When he goes to prison, he's going to have a lot of time to ponder it. I don't think that was part of the plan. It better not be, because as the ambassador said at the beginning, the atmosphere they pump into here is great for preservation of the paintings, but not so great for preservation of a living human body. I get the feeling Daniel didn't know that. Breathe. The room doesn't seem to have any kind of emergency failsafe in case someone does get trapped inside. Back at the party, the ambassador is enjoying all the attention this pretty photographer is giving him. This for being such a wonderful subject. I can hardly wait for the interview. It's a good thing Daniel didn't see that. Between the toxic gas and her kissing him, it's hard to say which would make him gasp worse. Uh, will you excuse me, Kate? Duty is no respecter of ours. Yes, I must have the paintings Friday. Friday is much. That's the dealer they were told to watch out for. She gets a nice picture of the two of them together. A jury will love it. In the sealed room, Daniel is scrambling to find a way out of here before he loses consciousness. Mr. Ambassador, I have I wonder if that little ding in the picture frame will become significant. Kate won't get to find out, at least not for the time being. Nothing. All of a sudden the air pressure rises and the bells start ringing. And he didn't do anything last time either. Your machinery is busted and you owe him an apology.
mission accomplished. Now he can just stroll out of there, find a nice quiet corner, and cough his head off for a while. Grigario may be right, sir. Grigario wants to fly these paintings out on Friday by helicopter. Says it's the only time he can arrange for a pickup. No, oh, no, that's earlier than we planned. I wouldn't trust him. We have no choice, Tandy. Things like this, the alarms, just don't feel right. That's what he and Gregario were disagreeing about when Kate got that wonderful picture. But Diego is a believer now. Let's get these things out of here. First, he'll make his apologies to Kate. Tell me something. Could you act as my hostess this Thursday night? Nothing be one of those little art gatherings at Gregario's, huh? And this time, no pictures, no interviews, just you and me. I'd love to, if I'm in town. Uh, call me at the Mayfair. Indeed I shall. <laughs> she knows lots of ways to make sure she's not in town. She collects the stuff from his pocket, gives him a very promising goodbye, and they're out of there. In spite of your great personal success with the ambassador... You told me to lead him on. I didn't tell you to drive him to drink. You were doing the driving. I wouldn't worry about the ambassador. I'll bet he has another secret room with a phenomenal porn collection, especially four days like this. Yeah, well, in spite of your effective support, I'm afraid we failed. Where did we fail? You took the photograph. It was all in vain. Why? We've got enough evidence right now to get a warrant to search that embassy. By the time that native agreement is signed, by the time they can move in, those paintings are going to be long gone. Oh. By helicopter day after tomorrow. There are times when diplomacy takes too long. And since Diego is the dictator's brother, there's no point in going to the Iberian authorities. Where is Iberia, I hear you ask? Well, Iberia is the name of the long peninsula where Portugal, Spain, and France are. For about a week in the mid-70s, they joined forces and formed the dictatorship of Iberia. But the alliance fell apart almost immediately when the Spanish and Portuguese wanted to pronounce the name Iberia, but the French insisted on declaring five of the six letters silent and calling it E. Daniel only sees one way out of this mess. We, uh, we play De Vega's game only in reverse. We go back into the vault with the forgeries and exchange them for the originals without his knowing it. Danny, you can't. That's impossible. Yeah, it's our only chance if we don't do that. Paintings are gone. If Tandy thinks things are getting weird now, just wait until he sees five paintings bob bob bobbing along the hall by themselves. The ambassador's limousine will pick me up in 15 minutes. Are we all set? Well, where are the paintings? In the truck. The drug? The best clay laboratories could come up with according to your specs. It'll keep a man unconscious for 20 minutes. The cart? My uniform? In the truck. We'll follow right behind. All right, let's go. We know the ambassador will be thoroughly distracted, but I'm not sure Tandy knows what those things inside of the top part of her dress are. The ambassador asked Kate to be his hostess, which means another fancy party. It's a tough life, but tragically, he stuck with it. This is such a bore. I want to be alone with you. Champagne makes me silly. Does it do that to you? When I'm around you, Everything makes me sick. You need a refill, Mr. Ambassador. Stay right here. I'll be right back. Champagne, beautiful women, priceless paintings. Is there no end to the torture? How's he doing? He's well on his way. It's time. Are you ready? For a change, she doesn't have to try to guess where he is. Usually in a television show, the good uh, guy drugs the bad guy's drink and then the bad guy wants to switch. I'm not sure Diego can think that clearly right now, even without the drug. He drinks it all, and then Kate makes a very interesting suggestion that we have to guess what it was. Time for Daniel to change into his working clothes. So to speak. Whatever Kate suggested, I don't think it's going to happen. Candy's watching. Que 
kiss him. What kind of a girl do you think I am? I said, kiss him. He's unconscious. Will you kiss him? It's not like you haven't already, and there probably isn't much difference in quality between when he's unconscious and when he's not. Oh, uh, could we go into the library? Now I really want to know, was David McCallum standing there in his blue suit doing all that to a limp Ross Martin, or did Ross Martin do all that on his own? I can believe either one without hesitation. Tandy, if you're incredibly lucky, someday you may experience a kiss that makes you walk like that. Oh, sir, uh, could you get us some champagne? Oh, why don't you bring the whole cart? That one. That particular cart just happens to be concealing the forged paintings. Now, want to see a great effect? One thing I enjoy about these invisibility effects is how seamlessly everything goes together. In that scene, you really believe there's something unseen that's holding him in that ridiculous position. Tandy brings the card in, then slips out to go wash his eyeballs. Kate uses Diego's hand to open the secret door, then starts laughing to draw the guard over. Mr. Ambassador. I think he's giving you the night off. Is that correct, sir? Here, have some champagne. Just have it somewhere else. Somebody should be in front of that vault. I wouldn't want to go in there and interrupt him. Now I'm sure Tandy has no idea what female anatomy is. Here's the thing, Tandy. She's got the ambassador so wound up, he's practically walking on air. We already know there's a telltale nick in one of the frames that could tell Diego what happened here, so let's take care of that. That should do it, so it's time to leave. Daniel slips out first. Meanwhile, Tandy can't stand it anymore. He has to know what all this man, woman, stick their faces together stuff is all about. Well, I think we ought to think about somebody watching that vault. Yeah, it's the vault he's interested in. His motives are totally pure and based on nothing but loyalty to his employer. Sir, uh, have either of you gentlemen seen my, uh, my service card? We're uh, packing up. Where's the ambassador? I, I thought you two were... Uh... I'm not used to having gentlemen pass out on me. He's at his desk. Yes, ma'am. They'll start trying to sober him up and get the chef's cart while they're at it. Daniel wants Kate out of there now, but the plan calls for her to stay with the ambassador and cover his exit with the goods. What happened, Kate? She says, forget it, I'm taking a cab. The implication is, I've been insulted enough for one night. 
He keeps saying it's no trouble, and she says, no, I'm taking a cab. Oh, no, sweet Kate. I insist. It's interrogation time. She can't say Daniel didn't warn her. And where's Kate? She hasn't come out yet. I told you, Diego, you were very drunk. You opened the drawer and put your hand on that thingamajig, and that panel opened just like it is now. And that's when I came out. You told me to take the night off. Never! Did you set foot in that passageway? No. What reason would she have to? And even supposing she did, what could she do there besides notice yet another door? Tandy mentions the service cart, so they'll go check the collection to make sure she didn't tamper with it. He must think she's stupid, because if she did do something, wouldn't she have the good sense to leave afterward? She didn't, but wouldn't he assume she did? Everything appears to be in order, right down to the damaged frame. So he may as well believe her. Yeah. Do you wear earrings, Tandy? Only on weekends, sir. Never when I'm on the clock. And those would clash with my outfit anyway. Kate, these men are going to be very rough with you if you do not tell me who is behind all this. I've been telling you. I am. You. And how did you happen to learn about all this? A bar. I, I forgot the name. That's the best she can come up with? A bar? If I'm in her place, I don't try a lame story like that. I look over at Tandy and scream, I told you it wouldn't work. If I'm going down, you're going with me. And watch the fireworks. You haven't got these paintings anyway, Kate. Why do you force me to hurt you? Well, this is your last chance, Kate. Who, huh? Who knew about this? Gregorio. did. Okay, that's just as effective. Maybe more effective because Tandy works for him and presumably has expressed some kind of loyalty. Gregorio is none of those things. All right, that's it. Weston, come back here. I've got to give you credit, Weston. You did a fine job, but I'm not going to stand here and let you go back in there and ruin it project's too important. That kind of depends on your perspective, doesn't it? This guy is concerned about inanimate objects and the political fallout their loss could cause. That's it. Daniel's concerned about the love of his life. Pardon him if he finds that a little more important than scoring a few votes for some clown. That's right, Dad. What about Kate? She'll be all right. You got your paintings, Mr. Wood. I want my wife. He's your man, Carson. Can't you stop him? No. Not in a million years. He tried once and it cost him a fortune in lab rebuilding costs. Inside, Kate is keeping her head down while those fireworks I mentioned are going on. Diego just had Gregorio brought in. Now remember, he didn't tell Gregorio what the merchandise was. Originals? Of course. Why? Where could you sell them? Exactly what I was going to ask you, Gregorio. Where did you intend to sell them? I hope I don't have to point out that they're talking right past each other. Diego is talking theft while Gregorio isn't sure what they're talking about. This room, these paintings, why? These paintings are what I'm supposed to help you to move? You are out of your mind. Basically, he's thinking, I'm good, but even I can't move stuff that came from the Capitol building. Oh, you're a marvelous actor, Vittorio. Bravo, bravo, bravo. But you see, it's too late. It's over. You are caught. The girl Miss Brenton has told us everything. And now he's thinking, Miss who? What? I don't know who this person is. No, that didn't refresh his memory because his memory isn't down there, it's up here. I'm sorry, Kate. I know that 
Gregorio understands. I hope that you will too. But I can't take the risk that any of this will ever come out. I get what he means, but what now? He's about to eliminate his only conduit to selling them, so what's he figure to do with them? It might be better to just put a nice big scare into both of them and then force Gregorio to go ahead with the deal and pay him. What Gregorio does with him after that is his problem. Suffocation would have been a much kinder way to kill you, but unfortunately, my system is out of order. However, Dandy is very proficient with a gun, and I assure you he'll see to it you die painless. Oh, well, all is forgiven then. Since he still doesn't know who she is, she could offer to marry him so she can't testify against him. You won't feel a thing. I promise. Ladies first. Oh, no. Grazie mio Dio. No, not Dio. Daniel. Whoever did it, let's get out of here. He was about to shoot us. Then something knocked him. Something from heaven. It was our guardian angel, Mr. Gregario. Aren't we lucky to have one that cares? Kate. Danny! <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. And there's that guardian angel now. Carlson says he's the only guardian angel he's ever seen in a chef's uniform. I find it more interesting to realize it's the only guardian angel he'll ever see with a fake head, but that's just me. And the custodian. But all Daniel was. Blah, 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 blah. Slow down! I'll bet he has another secret room with a nut with a